Of Hong Kong's many infrastructure projects of the 80s and 90s, few were as crucial to maintain an efficient transportation network as the Tinkau Bridge and Approach Viaduct. Its purpose? To connect the rapidly developing Western New Territories with the urban centres of Kowloon, Hong Kong Island and the new airport at Cheklap Kok. The task was to design and construct approach structures and a cable-stayed bridge spanning the 900 metre wide Rambler Channel between Tinkau Headland and Qingyi Island. In August 1994, the design and build contract for the Tinkau Bridge and Approach Viaduct was awarded by the Highways Department to the International Tinkau Contractors Joint Venture. The successful tender was based on a unique design developed by Schleich Bergemann und Partner in Stuttgart, Germany. It features an 1177 meter long cable stayed bridge with two main and two side spans supported by three slender single legged towers. To withstand the extremely high wind loads encountered during typhoons, cross struts below deck level and transverse cables were introduced to give the towers the required lateral stability. Two separate decks on each side of the towers contribute to the slender appearance of the bridge, while acting favourably in heavy wind conditions, with designed wind speeds of up to 95 metres per second. On site, the contractor established a technical department to carry out the necessary temporary works designs and to determine construction methods and sequences. During the entire construction period, this office provided the link between activities on site and design. Throughout the project, representatives of the highways department worked closely with the contractors and designers site staff to review progress and identify any areas of concern in order to enable a fast-track approach to the construction. Representatives of the joint venture, comprising Cubiertas and Entre Canales of Spain, Zublin of Germany, Downer of New Zealand and Paul Y of Hong Kong regularly visited the site for progress reviews and meetings with the client. Groundbreaking for the first foundations took place in February 1995. <laughs> Extensive earth moving in the area of the approach viaduct and ramps was carried out in very difficult terrain, including a nearly vertical rock face adjacent to the busy Tun Moon Highway where the slopes had to be cut back to accommodate an additional traffic lane and the two approach ramps. Close to roadways, and in areas where slopes of up to 45 degrees were encountered, foundations for the approach piers were excavated as hand-dug caissons. This method used to be common practice in Hong Kong, with husbands and wives working in teams. 115 such caissons, 2.1 metres in diameter, and up to 35 metres deep were excavated. After reaching foundation level, each pile was reinforced and concreted. 
The extensive earthworks in the immediate vicinity of a major highway called for strict safety measures. Multi-layered wire mesh and netting was installed on the slopes to protect motorists while excavators worked close by. In all, nearly three quarters of a million cubic meters of material had to be excavated. Traffic disruption was kept to a minimum, but at times everything had to stop. The locations of the three towers each presented different problems and different solutions were developed for the construction of their foundations. At the Tinkau Headland, site of the Northern Tower, rock breaking and blasting to a depth of seven meters below water level was carried out, while an additional area was reclaimed at the shore to provide protection of the foundation against potential ship impact. This reclamation included a jetty for the delivery of all plant, equipment and materials to the works area. After clearing of bedrock to level steps, reinforcement steel was placed for the construction of the 4,000 cubic meter pad foundation. Concrete was ferried in by custom-built barges from the loading facility at Chingyi Island on the other side of the channel. The barges were designed to carry up to nine concrete trucks. Concreting of this first six meter deep foundation was carried out in four separate pours. The speed and efficiency with which this was accomplished indicated that concreting of the remaining two foundations in large single pours was achievable. The foundation of the bridge's central tower is located on a man-made island in the middle of the channel. For the reclamation of the island,